So here we are today. We are lucky to have uh, a unique leader in the region and the globe who's trying to do an impact uh, and trying to change how really things uh, function in the world using technology. So let me welcome directly Dr. Mihayella. Welcome Dr. Mihayella on the platform. Welcome uh, especially today on uh, Cardano Summit 2022 Dubai. Uh, edition, if you want to call it. Thank you so much for the invite. I'm so excited about this conversation. Thank you, okay. So first, I would love our audience to really understand who is Dr. Mihayella. Uh, it happened that we know you, but we want, because there's new people, there's older people, there's people that are really in this space, but I want everybody to start understanding and learning from you and understanding who you are uh, and what are you trying to do? You know, who you are, who am I? It's a, it's a kind of quintessential question, right? So uh, we would need probably to dedicate, at least for myself, I will need to dedicate uh, a few volumes <laughs> to answer this question properly. In the context of, uh, of blockchain, though, yes, I can, I can answer the question maybe in a few paragraphs. So I am a, uh, I'm an academic at my foundation, uh, robotics PhD, and an expert in distributed intelligent systems. And I have been working on uh, developing infrastructures uh, for distributed systems all my career. And when uh, uh, Satoshi came out with a beautiful uh, paper and with the beautiful architecture, I was there already with uh, all the applications. So I have been uh, a part of, uh, and actually an instigator of before, before blockchain was on the block, before this new kid. Um, I was uh, uh, one of the pioneers of the Foundation for Intelligent Physical Agent, which is an IEEE computer science organization. And um, we've been working, but our architectures were pretty sick. They were complex and complicated, and you can find them if you look at my uh, over 100 uh, peer-reviewed publications, you can find them online. So, um, of course, my passion for distributed intelligence systems started uh, with robotics, yes, and distributed robotics, and uh, creating more effective and efficient manufacturing systems for with using uh, robots that can cooperate and work together. But then it has expanded to societies. So I held the Canada Research Chair in eSociety. And what is eSociety is, you know, maybe a better social network. So I studied social networks. That's why I've never been on Facebook, not on Twitter, because I know their design <laughs> is fallible from the beginning. Yes. So uh, you need a... Anyway, I, I do not want to talk about this now. What I want to mention is that my passion for better governance of the distributed infrastructure has actually... Uh, kept up my interest in the topic. And as such, when blockchain appeared, I was advising the World Economic Forum. And I was on the Data-Driven Development Council there. And I proposed uh, blockchain among the top 10 uh, future and emerging technologies to uh, look at and to really take note of. There was a big backlash at the time because everybody was saying, oh, Bitcoin, it was just when Mount Gox fell and it was like, no, blockchain, no, this is not going to happen. But they listed it on that year. And then since then, it, 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 uh, you know, the rest is history. So that's uh, probably uh, the best answer that I can give in, <laughs> in this context. Otherwise, of course... Uh, who I am, it's, it's a much deeper question. I'm also a poet. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we will not with, go there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for uh, working with the World Economic Forum and then putting it, because I think that was a substantial moment in, in history, I would say. And that's around nine to ten years now. And I think what we're living with Mangogs then, we're living with FTX today. So it's a challenge on a blockchain, even though... The blockchain technology is not related to, it is related, it's a foundation, but they will always mixing them together 
always Bitcoin. No, it's not Bitcoin. It's blockchain. It's a technology and so on. And so it's a, it's a, and, we're yes, pretty and that's why I mentioned governance. Yes. Mount Gox, FTX, you know, governance is the keyword. If we do it right with the right rules of the game and do respect the game uh, so that it is honest and ethical, then we will hopefully avoid the next, uh, Mount Gox slash FTX crisis. Great. Um, you've been heavily involved in creating impact and doing an impact. So what's your vision about impact projects that you are working on? Why they are they important? Of course. I mean, uh, first of all, I think we need to define what impact is. Yes. Uh, many people... Like impact can be, for example, for a company to make a lot of money. Is that, is that impact? Yeah. So um, I'm coming from, from this definition of impact. Uh, impact is uh, connected to a theory of change. And it is meant to answer the question, what change do I want to effect in the world? Right? So do I want to improve people's lives? Do I want to... Uh, let's call it save the planet through better, uh, uh, let's say, governance of our CO2 emissions. Uh, do I want to um, eradicate poverty? Look at all the uh, sustainable development goals. So which uh, change do I want to effect in the world? From my perspective, I do not know. Um, I, I've never been interested in the, let's say, capitalist rat race, like let's make money and step on cadavers, <laughs> on dead bodies. Um, I've always been interested, however, in making the world better, in actually affecting a change in the world and straightening things up, starting with, uh, as I mentioned, governance, and if you want, even ending with better technologies that serve people better. Through that, however, you know, it's like I think the motto would be do well by doing good. <laughs> so that's that's the mantra of impact for me. Um, it just worked out somehow. Yes, obviously, as an academic, I focused mainly on, on study and research and revealing a lot of my findings to the world so they can use them streamlining uh, bureaucracies. This is one of my main purposes. If we can manage to streamline the bureaucratic processes, the paper processes, which actually some, some uh, people in some countries leave only, you know, to navigate their whole life, their whole day. It's like, go to this office and go to that office, go with this paper here and there. I mean, it's really very futile and... and uh, it doesn't help humanity in any way. So, so with blockchain, with technology, we can do that. But I think, you know, um, uh, what is impact, it has to be answered mainly on concrete uh, projects. Or Yeah, indeed. We need an output in, in the end of the day. For some, it's about money, as you mentioned. For some others, it's about somehow <laughs> saving lives, somehow advancing societies, somehow advancing population itself. And today we are celebrating 8.000300,000 billion people on the planet. So we crossed the 8 billion mark uh, last yesterday. So uh, you, men you mentioned about, you know, classifying a project and uh, projects and impact. Uh, and today we are on Cardano Summit. Can you define... Uh, more about the Cardano definition of impact. You just mentioned maybe some, but for our audience also to kind of uh, jump on, on this and then maybe start building. No, absolutely. And you know, it's very interesting because uh, I've been uh, uh, this summer, and of course I always go to conferences and so on and so forth. So whenever I'm talking to, to people at a conference and tell them that I am from you know, the Cardano community and I tell them about Cardano, the first thing they are telling me is like, Cardano, the impact blockchain. <laughs> so, so somehow Cardano uh, has this reputation of an impact project. And they also tell me something else. Everything about Cardano, I mean, you know, <laughs> I do not know, they don't talk about the technology, but they say, it's the community. The Cardano is this amazing community. 
And, and that is, you know, the impact which we affect in the world is through our people, through how they are, through what they are doing. But I'd like if you allow me to, um, to share um, my screen, you know, to show sure. a few slides to answer your question, maybe on some concrete projects. Um, because um, I have been working, you know, also uh, since I am with Cardano on a few projects, but um, I'm very happy that you shared with me the projects that you have in Dubai, because I have found there some pearls, some amazing Imba project, which I already love. And I'd like to answer your question from the perspective, as I mentioned, of concrete projects. So right. as I mentioned, yes, so when we think about Cardano for impact, the question is, what change do I want to affect in the world? And can we, Cardano community, be that change? And what would it take for us to, to be that change? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Please Great. proceed. <clears throat> so Cardano is an impact blockchain. Of course, in general, blockchain is a transformational technology. Cardano, however, yes, uh, is a transformational technology for good. It is poised to do good in the world from the start by Charles, uh, I do not, Dream, I would call it, yes, by Charles Dream. And I have a podcast with Charles, which I'm going to release soon. And it is um, in the framework of uh, the Dream Wonders Impact podcast that I am uh, going to release uh, at the summit. So Charles' vision is that, you know, we envision a global economy that uses technology as a force for good, thus driving the virtuous rebuilding of the systems of the world. And many of you have heard that, yes, that Charles' um, mission on this planet is to enable people to take full control of their lives, yes, and, and to evolve all the current systems in the world. That's why it's called input-output, yes? Input-output, and I am a control engineer, I'm a systems engineer. And in systems, we have the system, which is like a box. And then we have the input and the output. And that's how he is thinking. He is thinking systemically to evolve the social systems, the financial systems, the governance systems of the world towards that new world that enables people and empowers them to put full control of their lives. Can it be with economic identities, with having their money uh, in their wallet? Like they say now, not your keys, not your money. Uh, like the FTX uh, wouldn't happen, crisis wouldn't happen if Charles' dream would exist. And therefore, uh, I, uh, G is releasing now even one better wallet, Lace, maybe you heard about that. <clears throat> so, how do we empower people to participate in an ethics economy? And I'd like here, you know, to give uh, examples from the Dubai project, which I found uh, amazing. So number one, and I've been working with um, donation, yes, uh, uh, with donations and with these NGOs, and uh, I know how it functions. Another project, a uh, very beautiful project, is the East Asia Artist Grants. Uh, and yes, we know, and you know, I am from uh, still a developing country, but I live now in the US, yes, in Washington, DC, but I lived part of my life in Romania. And, um, you know, I know the struggle of talented people there because there is no money of anything for anything. And especially artists, yes? I mean, when you really are in the developing world and the first worry is you don't have what to eat, right? Then art just, goes uh, last on the last uh, thing on Maslow pyramid. <laughs> so, so therefore, it's so important to support artists. And this project, therefore, I, I, I really salute it, the East Asia Artist Grants, to offer grants using uh, NFTs, minting NFTs on the Cardano blockchain. And then there's this eco-friendly online apparel store which I think all the stores should be like that. They should only sell this certified, verified, um, climate-friendly and social-friendly. I mean, it's not only about climate. It's also about to be sure that they don't use child labor or, you know, they do not exploit people when they prepare their uh, 
fabrics or, or, or dresses or clothing or whatever you have to sell. So this is also a, a project which I think it stands as an example for the world. And I think it is pretty clear how all these projects are changing the world and they can affect uh, that kind of change, yes? Uh, in the systems of today's world that can actually enable people to manifest their talent fully support them to take by supporting them to take full control of their lives i will stop sharing i think uh, i spoke too much but i'm very passionate about this topic so uh thank you thank you for that slides i think they they share a, another perspective for people so how they can uh you know uh, be empowered using uh, the blockchain you mentioned one of them is uh, nfts and there's other many other uh, also solutions uh, and that's why uh, why they are important in our region those impact projects and working on a community how we can get them involved yeah and i i, I would like to turn that question to you because you are in that region i'm in washington dc i looked at your projects and i love them so tell me your opinion about this and then maybe i can chip in with some ideas Definitely. Uh, you see, I think what, what's happening today with uh, today that we are in Cardano Summit and when they opened it for other regions to join, that was one of the, uh, I would say, a change towards the future. Even though, you know, we are, uh, we are around uh, five people uh, who are handling the Cardano uh, Summit in Dubai. And technically, most of us at one point of time never met each other. So we all met online. So that was, I think, a change that we got brought back, we got brought together all by uh, something. Maybe we're volunteering, but we brought for, for an impact, all right? So we need to see more uh, people as a community working towards something, working towards the better. And of course, utilizing a good uh, technology that is available so that it can also empower you towards that change. That is said on a hypothetical, not hypothetical, on a high level, but going down to the lower level where you read the community involvement as uh, I think Catalyst is one of the great uh, thing that has been created, you know, to empower also entrepreneurs and, and uh, small companies or SMEs to be in the space. But we need more about how you know, uh, we can uh, do the impact itself, not just on a financial aspect, how we can drive those communities to see, uh, for example, in the in the region here in UAE, they're working towards strategies. Was it the metaverse? Was it, uh, you know, blockchain? Was it, uh, you know, 2030 uh, vision? Uh, not just in, the, in, the, in Dubai, but also spreading across because if you look at GCC itself, those are the big... Uh, economies but the minute you step down from this and then you focus on the middle east things change you know they need more help they need and this is possibly where also that can be you know maybe from dubai starting uh, with the help uh, of uh, cardano foundation and other parties to start doing local help local funds local uh, initiative in, uh, localization of uh, of maybe and that's also what we're trying to push in a little bit of an our power with a, with a MENA town hall. But uh, in the end of the day, you know, <laughs> there's something even bigger than us. But in the end of the day, we're pushing all of us towards something uh, on yes. a global aspect. So, yes. So um, what I'd like to add to what you mentioned here is... You know, when I, again, when I'm at events and I tell them that I'm from Washington, D.C., I like to joke that I live in the capital of the universe, yes, Washington, D.C. But I also, because I've been uh, uh, in Dubai several times, yes, and uh, we want to have a collaboration and, and also to set uh, foot and uh, do some more work there. I tell them, well, it's moving to Dubai, the capital of the universe, because the regulatory framework is so amazing and it's attracting all the innovation. It's attracting all the startups. And um, I visited the Dubai with Charles um, in May and uh, we discussed with uh, the uh, you know, Minister of Artificial Intelligence and uh, his helpers 
uh, on, uh, and, and they invited us to, to open an office there. And now I uh, intend to uh, open a Catalyst Impact Accelerator in Dubai. And uh, I'll, I'll talk uh, about this a bit later. But the first thing which I think is to be noted is in order to attract talent, you need to have a favorable uh, regulatory framework, a clear and favorable one. And in Dubai, we have VARA, which is actually now leading in the world with their rules, and everybody is learning from them. So therefore, why not go to Dubai? And as you see, most companies, most big companies already have set foot there. Uh, and uh, so I participated in several uh, discussions, including, and because you mentioned Metaverse, I participated in the Dubai Metaverse Assembly, where the Crown Prince of Dubai actually organized and actually he made an appearance there to show how important technology, this future technology is for Dubai and to show his full support. And the Minister of Artificial Intelligence presented the Dubai Metaverse strategy, which, of course, Metaverse is the culmination, yes. The Metaverse and the smart city, I would say, are the culmination of uh, technological progress. And I would call it technological convergence. So I call myself a technology alchemist. Why? Because I am weaving several technologies, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and uh, smart uh, dust, uh, internet of things, if you want to call it this way, into applications that can streamline things in smart cities, for example, transportation. Yes, it, you can, uh, it can guide your cars uh, on not only on the shortest path, but also if there is a, a let's say, delay and, and then you consume more, it can guide the cars so they consume less. So, so you know, a lot of smart applications uh, with Singularity Net I'm working on an even more fascinating project, which we hope to deploy in Dubai, and that is called Singularios. It's the first conscious city in the world. Um, there's so a, there's a, a lot. So we have a scoop for Dubai. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. And I will be there on December 5 <laughs> to continue my, my discussions, and I really hope that we will meet in person. So this is actually, yes, why Dubai for me of course, the community is amazing. But I have to say that the community is amazing for Cardano in many places. I will meet now at the summit, the DC community. Uh, we have all over the world. Yes, I spoke with the uh, Nordic countries community. We have the community very dedicated all over the world. But they, do not, they will not be able to achieve what you can achieve in Dubai if the regulatory framework is not as open and as That's the milestone. As you That's have That's the main Dubai. milestone that has to be uh, totally. Yeah. And then imagine with the with a with a strategy of only the metaverse, they're opening forty thousand jobs. So this is by itself an impact for the region, right? Definitely, and they probably you know that. Um, have presented how actually the, the Dubai Future Foundation at the Dubai Metaverse Assembly has uh, launched their Metaverse office. So now if yeah. you want to meet with the government there, you are in the Metaverse. And it's amazing how, how forward-looking they, looking they are. So I was at a conference called Imagine Nation here in Washington, D.C. recently. And there were some amazing, uh, absolutely amazing uh, uh, presentations of innovations. Uh, one of the most impressive was uh, using NFTs uh, in order to for the accountability of supply chains, which is amazing. Of, of uh, yeah, the government supply chains, which is amazing, amazingly innovative. And um, I told them, guys, <laughs> you are light years behind Dubai. What I have seen there, so you are very lucky to be. Uh, in a place which is actually has an institute for the future and um, actually has a museum of the future where the Dubai Metaverse Assembly happened and it's really looking forward uh, and it's ahead of the pack when it comes to innovation. Definitely um, we are in, a, in the right city as they say. Uh, so to keep uh, the discussion for the sake of time so that our program also continues within uh, the next five minutes uh, how do we start and uh, how do we initiate and what are your last words? 
Yes, I would like to, you know, if you allow me to share my screen once again, just sure. once again, um, because I want to also address, do you see it? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. I think I um, you have to, share to it press again. again this button. Yes. Okay. So, um, sorry about this. Okay, so so yeah, I'd like just to because you asked me how do we actually have impact and profits, right? So the the main thing which I see uh, as being critical for the future of the world is to combine profits with uh, with impact and actually to allocate resources to impact projects, but moreover, like in that project with uh, the organic or uh, yeah, climate-friendly apparel, fabrics, and so on and so forth, to set up your business with impact in mind. So every business, in my opinion, should be an impact business because when the world is a stakeholder, how you grow matters. And there are a lot of uh, approaches here. So you can have classing investing, which is like the typical, yeah, the investors want to make money and that's it and no matter what. And you see where we got with the world and those conditions. Then you can have traditional philanthropy where you just give money. <clears throat> but to be a successful impact business, you need to be somewhere in between here. You need to blend these social and financial returns for long-term social impact and to work at the tension between these two things. And I'd like to also, uh, in terms of my last word, yes, there, is, there, is, there are many way, many things I still wanted to tell you, uh, but we can have another conversation, uh, given that the time does not allow. But if, because you mentioned my last word, my dream for Cardano, and let's say our moonshot would be impact as culture, that our community is actually looking at impact uh, before everything else and allocates their energies to that and the art of, of course, do well by doing good. I do not mean, yes, we should definitely increase the amounts in our treasury and the value of uh, ADA. However, I think that the value of our blockchain will increase if we look at it as impacted culture, not simply oiling the wheels of the old system. As Charles was saying, we want to evolve them and transform them to innovate for improving people's lives and changing those systems in that manner. So, so um, yeah, there's, there's, there are ways to do this. So it's like, it's not only lip service, not only corporal social responsibilities in which you meet uh, with your people and just do some community work once a uh, month. Work. Yes. Community action. Yeah, exactly. Not only that. But it means that you choose your clients, your projects, and your suppliers based on the impact that they have in the world. Are they polluting? Are they not? So you act like a barometer measuring the, what you, the effect that you make in the world. And my very last word, which I always like to have, is from the Sustainable Ada project, which is, we believe that Cardano is making a step towards a world where well, new mechanisms of decentralized cooperation and consensus can start to replace the cheap at all costs and business as usual structures that are degrading the world we live in. So this is my last word, and I really hope that this will happen with our community and that we will do the best uh, among all the other blockchains or projects by doing good, and we will be, we continue to be an inspiration for them in this regard. Uh, thank you for those uh, lovely last words. This is where innovation at the edge of impossible is possibly your motto in life. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yes, indeed. You know, whenever I read that from the Sustainable Ada, I am tearing up because it's so beautiful and I really want to make it happen. And... Um, we need a, a major transformation, yes, like a mindset transformation in the world. I think that is the role of Cardano and of the Cardano community to effect that transformation in the world. 
This is my dream. <laughs> that's hope. That's hope. It starts, and then I'm, I'm a big supporter of women in technology. And then one of the leading things I think we need more women also involved uh, in that space. So hopefully we'll do it all together. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you again. It's Dr. an inspiration Mihaela. for that as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Mihaela, for being with us on the Cardano Summit 2022 in Dubai. Uh, <clears throat> you've been amazing. Uh, we are really pleasure to have you on this and then we'll see you soon in 5th of December if I'm not mistaken we'll try to meet you in person uh, and then with that thank you keep on impacting thank you and I look forward to see you on December 5 and hopefully as many as possible from the Cardano community from Dubai